Hey you guys, so I just wanted to come and give a quick tutorial and then part of my skincare routine because a couple of you have requested that. So this tutorial is going to be for these pillow soft bedroom curls that you see right here. This is a great tutorial for women with fine, low density, I have very low density hair, natural hair, women who are not able to pineapple. This is done on just co-washed hair um, that was dried naturally like in a ponytail um, and then uh, flexi rotted with a little bit of conditioner and an oil blend. So that's everything that you're going to see here. What I'm doing right now is exactly what I did when I first did this style, um, which is brush my hair out with a boar bristle brush. So in reality, originally, I had deep conditioned my hair overnight. So I sat under the dryer and I fell asleep with the deep conditioner on my hair. Then I put my hair, um, I rinsed it in the morning put my hair back with a little bit of my avocado oil blend, which I'll show you later in this video, and pulled it all back to the back of my head in a ponytail. Remember, I have low density hair, so I can dry my hair this way. Um, with a silk scrunchie, twisted my ponytail, and then wrapped my scrunchie in a bun and put another scrunchie. I know a lot of you thick-haired women are like, how in the world are you capable of drying your hair like that but when your hair is as low density as mine you really can um, and then I left it like that for a day and the next day I took it down and um, just if it were slightly damp where the scrunchie was just let that dry which takes about an hour and then after that I used this oil blend which as you can tell is avocado oil jojoba oil and um, a couple drops of lavender oil I when I'm maintaining the style, it's the same as when I do the style. So I take about a pea-sized, and I do mean pea-sized for you fine-haired ladies out there with hair similar to mine, a pea-sized amount of the conditioner that I use, whatever your conditioner is. Um, I'll do a deep condition video like sometime after this one. Anyway, I take a pea-sized amount of that and I put it on my counter. And then I begin to part my hair as you're seeing here. And you're going to look and you're going to be like, where is the product, Irene Yvette? Where is the product? Well, when you have really, really fine and low density hair, you really cannot afford to put just a ton of product on your hair. That's not a thing that I can do like at all so it looks like I'm not putting anything on my hair but y'all I really am I'm just putting very little first I put um, like a minuscule amount of conditioner just so my hair is not totally dry and then I add a little bit of oil but I only put the oil on the dry spots it's literally like a drop of oil mostly at the ends of my hair and then I just roll it up I legitimately I think um, maybe we can count on my head, but I think I used less than 10 flexi rods. Maybe I used like eight or something. Um, I'm pretty sure I used less than 10 flexi rods because again, I have really fine hair and very, um, low density hair. So I don't need a bunch of flexi rods. When I put my flexi rods in, I am super, super careful so when you have hair, and again, just because this is who the tutorial is for, when you have hair as fine and as low density as mine, um, you really do have to handle your hair carefully. So if I feel any pulling at all, I will remove the flexi rod. I, I'm actually going to take this one out and redo it. Um, I will literally take it out and roll it again. These are rolled really, really loose. If you have a tighter curl pattern than me, again, I told you how I stretched my hair, but my hair is naturally wavy. I think I'll, I have one uh, wash day on here, but I'll do another one. So maybe my next video or the video after the next will be a, con a deep conditioning routine. If you have hair similar to my texture, you can probably get away with 
a loose roll like this because I was able to get my hair to lay pretty straight just by the drying method that I told you about. Just that drying it in a ponytail um, and twisting my ponytail was enough to get my hair pretty straightened out. If you have curlier hair than mine, then you might need to roll a little closer to the scalp. But if your hair is as fine and low density as mine, I kind of feel like almost no matter what your curl pattern is, you shouldn't have to pull too close to the scalp. Like, if you have hair that goes straight if you pineapple it, or goes flat if you try to pineapple it, then I wouldn't really worry about rolling it too close to the scalp. Because someone like me, I cannot pineapple my hair. That's like... It's not a thing that's going to occur, <laughs> okay? It's definitely not gonna happen. So right here you see me just going through my hair and I'm kind of just repeating the process all over my hair. I literally have to do this every night that I want to wear this style in order for the curls to keep. If I don't do this, what I can do to kind of keep the style for maybe two days but it will look a little bit different is I can flat twist my hair and then just kind of um, not twist it, flat twist it to the end, but just flat twist the part down to the nape of my neck and then roll the rest around a silk scrunchie. So that is something that I can do, but on the whole, in all honesty, um, if I want to keep it actually curly, I do have to flexi rod it. And again, that just comes with my particular hair type, you may be able to pineapple it, so this won't apply to you. But if you are one of the unfortunate black women who did not get blessed with five people's heads worth of hair on your head, then this is probably the best method for you. Again, just using very, very little product. Because when your hair is fine and it's low density, like product is not your friend. I see these tutorials with girls just like laying on massive amounts of conditioner and cream and gel. I, I never put gel in my hair. I cannot even imagine putting gel in my hair. That would be like insane. This is not that kind of tutorial. This is for women who cannot use any of that um, without it being horrible. So now my hair is up and I'm moving on to my skincare. This was a day around the house. Um, I literally took my hair down and put it up just for this video because Mr. is not here and I really didn't need to do my hair. Um, I really wanted to wash my hair. I was just taking the time out for you guys to do this tutorial. So I either used 90 poop alcohol and recently, because I was scolded, I sometimes use witch hazel. I wasn't wearing makeup this day. My skin was already clean. I was really just kind of touching it up for bedtime. So I went over my face. I think that night I used witch hazel. And I probably went through, I'm very thorough. Now mind you, my skin is clean because I washed it in the morning. And I haven't worn makeup all day, but I still probably use like five or six cotton ovals going over my skin, um, making sure I always do my hairline, always, always do my hairline. You can see me lifting it up. I'm just showing you now that normally if I were taking a shower or something like that, if I weren't already clean, I would um, wash my face in the shower with that and then I would go over it with my silk um, washcloth. That would be my routine, but since we're not doing that, I'm just doing the witch hazel or 90 proof alcohol, and then I have a cocoon um, that I dip in some water, soak in some water so it can soften a little bit, a silkworm cocoon. And while that softens, I just wash my hands with a little bit of mint soap because I don't want to touch my face with the oil from my hands on, I mean the oil from my hair on my hands. I'm not the best person for voiceovers, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So um, now you see me just sort of going over my face to exfoliate it with the cocoon. Again, this is a silkworm cocoon um, that I've soaked in water a little bit. 
I stay away from the fragile areas of my face. So obviously, I'm not going to rub above or under my eyes with it. Um, I'm doing my forehead. I'll do the lower parts of my cheeks, my chin. I'll make sure to get my neck. These do not smell very nice. Okay, I think I should say that. If you're inspired or you've never used a silkworm cocoon to exfoliate your skin, um, these do not smell good. I definitely think you could probably exfoliate your whole body with these. It's kind of, you know, gross if silkworms creep you out. We've had them as pets before, so they don't really creep me out. Um, but it's also luxurious in a way because that cocoon is made of silk. So you're really kind of exfoliating your face with silk. After that, I um, am treating some scars on my skin. So if you want to know my scar treatment regimen, like if you have hyperpigmentation or anything like that, um, from like acne or in my case, I actually burned my um, face under my eye. You probably can't tell because it's almost gone. It's been a couple weeks and I've been treating it. Um, and I know people are probably looking at my skin going, your skin is incredibly clear. What the heck are you dotting? But um, it worked so well on the burn that I was like, oh, let me go for these chicken pox scars from when I was like seven. And let me try these little dots that I don't like on my face. So I'm just trying it out on like other kind of things on my face. But that one I'm doing right now under that um, left eye was a literal burn. Y'all, I burned myself making pancakes on the face. Don't ask me how I did it, but I did. Now, what I will say is this will not take away your freckles. I have freckles, and I have freckles like where I'm putting that cream, and the cream has not affected my freckles at all. Like my freckles are still there, but it, it really has done wonders for that burn, which when it first happened, it was like, you know, like a little bubble. It was like a pretty serious burn. And when it came off, I thought, oh, man, it didn't leave a scar at all. And I was, like, amazed, and I was so happy. And then the next thing you knew, there was, like, a, a, you know how our skin gets. There was, like, a dark brown spot on my face. And as you can tell, that's pretty much gone. So, anyway, that motivated me to try it on other things. Um, I go ahead and, again, I do not wear a bonnet when Mr. is around. But he's not around, so I went ahead and put on my silk bonnet. So this is the next morning. So good morning. And okay, so wait, it's really not the next morning. Wait, let me clear this up. This is actually the morning after the next morning, you guys, if in all honesty. <laughs> so I'm finishing, um, but you'll, it's okay. This is going to sound horrible, but again, Mr. is not here. So I remember I did want to put my hair up anyway. I wanted to wash my hair. So it's actually been two mornings. This is the second morning. And I'm literally just taking this down because I want to wash my hair. I didn't feel like filming the end of this video, but I had already committed to it. And I had to take it down anyway. But I'm also doing my makeup regimen in this video. Surprise, surprise. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning. And so I was like, ugh, oh, fine. So um, basically for my makeup regimen, I kind of go over my face with my skincare treatment again, um, pull my hair down. I go over my edges with shea butter, um, especially in the winter that works really well. If you're not able to or shea butter doesn't work as well to lay your edges down, then you can use whatever it is you use. I, again, I'm just adverse to putting like gels and stuff like that in my hair. So, um, shea butter works well for me. Um, probably the only thing is I just have to be careful because there is a little bit of shine to it to make sure that after I do it, I go over it again, just to make sure it's not, you know, being too shiny. And I just do my edges with my fingertips and I just try to make them go in the same direction as my hair is naturally going. I'm trying to show you how long my hair is and how much, uh, the flexi rods have shrunk it up, but I'm too short, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's what that weirdness was about. Okay, so um, as you can see, the creams that I put on my face absorb really quickly. It's actually a serum and a cream. And then I go into my eyebrows. I have been using the same eyebrow pencil, which I really think is an eyeliner, 
but I've been using this since I was a teenager. Okay. I have brand loyalty like nobody's business. I use the same pencil that I have been using for literally decades because I'm far from a teenager now. And that is a CoverGirl pencil. It's, I don't know what they're called, but they're the CoverGirl pencils that come like two to a pack. Um, you can buy them like at Target. And I have literally been using them since I was a little kid. Um, teenager to me is a little kid. So I'm doing my brows. I spend an unhealthy amount of time on almost no makeup. This is what we're going to learn about me. <laughs> in this particular video. So this video is 30 minutes long. Let's just say that I spent a hell of a lot more than 30 minutes doing this makeup, even though I really don't do anything to myself. I spend a lot of time like in the mirror doing stuff, accomplishing what seems like nothing, but to me it's everything. So I use Anastasia of Beverly Hills Brow Gel. I'm trying to show it to you there, um, but not successfully. And I use it in clear. I do not use colored brow gel, but I find that it just adds like a nice, first of all, it sets your brows, most importantly, but it also adds like a nice look. What's interesting, and I got really into this, is that I had an old bottle and a new bottle of the brow gel. The new bottle is larger, but it's slightly less ounces of brow gel, or not ounces, but whatever they measured it in, I don't know. Um, a brow gel. Isn't that interesting? I literally for like five minutes, I was like, am I reading this wrong? So it's my preference. And I think I explained this later on in this video, uh, because I stopped doing my voice voiceover at some point. It's my preference to use Dior show mascara. Um, because I have amazing brand loyalty from the time that I was like a teenager, I used voluminous mascara by L'Oreal. A few years ago, maybe two years ago, I finally started using something different. I started using Dior Show. Um, I'm very particular about the wand on my mascara, and Dior Show is the only mascara I found that has a nice, super duper fat wand. The problem is, it's ridiculously priced, and I wanted to see if I could find some other mascaras that would work. So today I decided to charge to try this one but you can see I'm not feeling it like I worked on those eyelashes of mine for a long long time and it was pretty upsetting just how long I worked on them and how much I hated them but I think I can still use the Elizabeth Arden mascara for like if I'm filming on YouTube if I just don't want to waste the Dior show, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I wasn't feeling it. And now I'm just putting on my bronzer because that's pretty much all I wear. I put it on my cheeks. I put it on my chin. I dust my nose with it. Um, I like to put it above my eyes. I don't think I show that though. And because I'm literally a neurotic person, and I honestly was not happy with that mascara, I'm going over it with some lash fibers. I don't know. I was so frustrated with this y'all. I'm literally going to stop my voiceover because I planned to do a voiceover for this video and I got so frustrated. I started talking to you guys in the bathroom just to explain my irritation with this life. So let's cut to me rambling in the bathroom because that will be fun. <laughs> so I wanted to try that Elizabeth Arden mascara because I picked a couple. I know I'm doing a voiceover for this, but I just figured I would just talk to you really quick. What I normally use on my eyes is Dior Show. So I used to use Voluminous um, by, I think it's L'Oreal. So I would use the Voluminous mascara, but it was a little clumpy. And um, so I went in search of just a better quality mascara that had a similar wand, which I like. I don't want to open this, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I like a really fat, fluffy wand. So the Dior Show has that, and I love, love the Dior Show's formula for mascara. Problem is, it's $30 a container. I just bought this one not even a month ago. I already purchased another one because these only last about a month. Uh, once you open them, 
the first use, obviously, of any mascara is not the best. But after you use them two or three times, they're pretty much going to be on the verge of running out. So this may last you about a month. That's even if you're not like using it all the time. Like I wear mascara maybe two or three times a month. I don't wear mascara that often. Um, yeah, it runs out really quick. So for $30, that's just a lot. So I decided I would experiment like with another mascara. So when I went to pick up this one, I asked the lady and she suggested the one that she used because she said it provided like a really natural look, which is the Elizabeth Arden, which when I looked at the brush, the brush is not as fluffy. You can see like there's a lot of space between the bristles. I like like a super dense, a super dense brush. So yeah, when I put it on my eyes, I feel like it's clumpy. It's not really buildable. It doesn't give great lash extension, which is why I went over it using um, the voluminous. This is not the normal voluminous that I would use. Um, I was experimenting with this one too. To my uh, Dior show. Anyway, so this has fibers in it, and so I went over with the fibers to kind of extend it, and you can kind of see. Um, it's not really good. It looks cheap to me. It has like a cheapy makeup kind of look. It doesn't, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe I'll do like a cheap versus expensive. Is I bought like a little tiny packet of the Chocolate Gold Soleil from Too Faced. It smells really nice, but it's actually not that great of a color. Sticking to my other Soleil, which is uh, a Soleil baked bronzer, which has like a little more shimmer to it because I don't wear foundation or anything like that um yeah so this is where we are I have like amazing brand loyalty so what I normally wear is lychee berry which is what this is lychee from Lancome that's my go-to lip um I rarely wear lipstick so yeah this is more like same as this but like in a stick form and it's actually like I wanted to wash my hair. I literally only did this tutorial for you guys. So my hair is a little like it's very moisturized, but it is in need of a condition. But I feel like for winter and just to have a really quick way to be put together, um, I feel like this is a great style. I'm not um, a... I don't use flexi rods like a whole, whole lot for my hair because uh, my hair tangles uh, when I flexi rod it. So it will just have little tangles throughout because my hair is used to being wavy and not curly. And so even with big curls like this, it does cause my hair to tangle. But I do feel like this style is a really easy like get up and go and it's a little bit kind of just really well put together it goes with like a more dressed up look um better to me than my wavy hair does sometimes because my wavy hair just can look like really casual i'm gonna try to flip it and see if i like it if i put it on this side I don't know. I'm just playing with it. I actually get way more shrinkage with um, a flexi rod set than I do just wearing my hair natural. Like, that's what I was trying to show you guys earlier is that my hair is actually like way down here. I can't even get, I'm too short to get all my hair in the frame. But my hair is relatively long. But with a flexi rod set, it looks 
pretty short, but I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind it. I think it's cute. Um, so yeah, I think the benefit of this is that um, you keep your ends moisturized. Um, you have like a ready-made style when you pull your hair down. Uh, another thing you could do, at least what I do, mind you, I have really low density hair. I think my hair, I'm not good with hair typing, uh, but I'll probably do a deep condition uh, routine. But with my hair, I think it's like a 4A, 3C maybe. I don't know. I don't know the hair typing chart that well. I heard that 4A has like uh, a zigzag or S's or something, and that's how my hair is. My hair is like S y. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm like a 4A in my hair type. Um, I guess I can show you guys what this looks like with an outfit. I'm not. Mm, I'm not in love with my makeup today, mostly because of that mascara. Like I don't wear a lot of makeup. As you saw, I do my brows, I do mascara, and I do bronzer, and then a lip gloss. So when you wear so little makeup, everything kind of has to really be on point. And so, yeah, I'm not loving my makeup, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll survive because I'm literally just gonna wash this off. I didn't have any reason to put makeup on today other than I wanted to finish this video and it's literally been like two days. The original filming of this video, like when I filmed the first part, it's just that Mr. is not here and I homeschool and I didn't really have a reason to take my hair down. I don't wear my hair down around my house. I wear my hair into flat twists around my house or when I'm wearing that style I wear it like you saw it flexi rotted with a silk bonnet only when mister's not here like when he's here then I just at most will do two flat twists and I'll only do that like right right before bed um sometimes not like right right before bed sometimes I'll wait until like you know he's kind of had his way with me and then <laughs> I'll do it uh just because he likes to like put his hands in my hair but yeah, I guess I'll show you this with an outfit. Why not? You guys, I lied. I did not feel like getting dressed. It got late. This is actually that same makeup. Um, it looks... A lot better outside of bathroom lighting I will admit and I guess you guys are probably looking at my eyelashes like why were you complaining so much but I don't know but the hair is bomb and I'm gonna wash it out now I'm gonna wash this makeup off my face I just thought this would be a fun tutorial I'll do a conditioning um, like a wash day I guess routine and which for me is conditioning because I rarely shampoo my hair. Um, but yeah, so that concludes this video and I hope you enjoy it. I hope the style works for you or the makeup looks works the makeup look works for you. Just a great natural, simple, but you know, sexy look. <laughs>